When we look back at the start of 2020, there is perhaps no starker moment of contrast than our university choir in Italy performing and watching the fireworks explode around the Colosseum at the turn of the new year. We had no forewarning that in just a few months, study abroad would shut down, the university would shut down, the world for a time would shut down. The spring 2020 semester began like any other, with sports on, students in the quad, and classes in session. We broke ground for the new Health and Human Services building with the traditional community celebration. Since January, we've all been following the news on coronavirus. But life mostly went on as it had. Then seemingly overnight, everything changed. What started as a quick extension of spring break quickly evolved into the quarantine we still find ourselves in today. And against all odds, I think we shined at that time. Our IT department trained and transitioned thousands of people in a matter of a week. Faculty and staff improvised classwork, incorporated regular wellness checks, and we were on call 24-7 to alleviate the many concerns of students and parents. Our students rose to the occasion in spite of unprecedented hardship. And during the pandemic that was brought to light in remarkable ways. The Moore Fieldhouse was converted into a field hospital for New Haven. Our campus at Long Wharf was converted into a COVID testing site. We helped organize flu clinics. And our graduates took the spotlight as our new frontline heroes. When morale started to tire, Southern Shares kick-started the talent portion of quarantine. International education brought together college students from around the world. Our student teachers kept teaching. Student services steadily became more available. And we ramped up our digital programming. We hired new faculty members in key growth areas, put on virtual concerts, and kept steadfast in our work to support the blue economy and members of our community received notable recognitions. International acclaimed astrophysicist Elliot Horch was named a Connecticut State University professor. Michelle Stewart McCarthy of the English Department received the CSCU Board of Regents Award for adjunct faculty. Kenneth Walters, Associate Professor of Psychology, earned the Mensa Foundation's 2020 Distinguished Teaching Award. And senior Asma Reimar was named a Truman Scholar and then a Rhodes Scholar, one of the most prestigious academic awards in the world. All this good work and impact inspired a sense of pride that led to a record-breaking $530,000 in donations during our annual Day of Caring, granting us the power to establish a food pantry and social services center for students in need. These were just a few of the many points of light that inspired us during these times. Yet we couldn't ever totally ignore the pervading sense of loss for our former way of life. And perhaps no student felt that more acutely than our graduating seniors. With restrictions still in place for large indoor events, commencement was eventually moved online for both graduates and undergraduates. But we were determined to make it special. At the hands of an outpouring of faculty and staff volunteers, more than 1,000 lawn signs were personally delivered to graduates' homes. And that was followed up by a stunning virtual ceremony that both honored university traditions and provided a more intimate portrait of our individual graduates. At the same time, our social justice mission was put to work. As the nation cried out for racial justice, Several students led peaceful protests in their hometowns. Hundreds of community members marched in solidarity on campus. With the hire of university's first vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we increased internal conversations around race, engaged the community in this work on social media forums, and launched a new podcast to dig deeper into the civic challenges ahead of us. Then suddenly it was the fall, and while the majority of classes remained online, 10 to 20% of classes were held on campus aided by the introduction of our first ever outdoor classrooms. In addition, residence halls were filled up to 60% capacity, ushering in a small sense of normalcy, buoyed by the hire of a COVID-19 coordinator to keep everyone safe. 
Now we find ourselves at the end of a year unlike any other, and in some ways at the end of an era. As we close out 2020, we first and foremost offer condolences to everyone who lost a friend or loved one to the coronavirus pandemic. And we look forward with cautious optimism to the year ahead. Our university identity has been challenged and shaken, but it remains intact. And in that fortitude, there are lots of reasons to feel optimistic about the year to come.